Hello everyone and welcome to another Linden Scripting Language Tutorial with me John Parker and me Jack Koenig and we are going to be looking at today uh, dollar boxes yes dollar boxes yeah one of the most essential things I believe <laughs> for um, use in Second Life and it comes to creating interactive menus and of course well interactive objects uh, mainly like remotes and stuff like obviously with the hoods and everything yeah mm -hmm. so that is what we're going to, well, that's what John is going to be teaching me today, so um, I'm in my class chair, and obviously I've got the teacher right in front of me, so John, go ahead. Stage is all yours. Okay, I've just put on my other screen here the LL dialogue call, because I know I'll probably have to refer to it in a minute. No okay, okay then. So, starting off with our usual cube and our usual script. You can see that all right, can't you say, Jack? Yep. Yep. Good. And just going to get rid of all that. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, so dialogues. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen them when you, um, I don't know, you have a product like M dash, for example. If I was to, and I'll just, just close that, because it's always good to give examples of what they look like. So if I was to click this up button, for example, this is the type of dialogue we're talking about. So you have buttons here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve buttons maximum. I could have just mm -hmm. done it in threes, couldn't I? And then you have text here. Now you supply the text and you supply the button names. You can't, you can't supply this bit. That just tells the owner and the name of the object. But everything else, and you can't supply those. But all of this will be learning how to create and how to properly um, get them to understand. And the reason we're doing it now is because it ties into listening, which you learned last week. Okay, so back into okay. this object. As to do a dialogue, it's very simple. It's just using the LL dialog call. And uh, LL dialog takes four parameters. That's the, the avatar, so that's a key, uh, like that. Then you've got the message, which is a string. Okay. And then you've got the buttons that you want. Now, the buttons are in a list. Now, I remember, I think it was two or three three episodes back, Jack, that I talked to you about lists very, very briefly. All they were is the array, remember, like, like yep. an array of like items, <laughs> and uh, the next one is a channel, the actual channel you want to send it to for the listen event. That was actually now, the last episode, I think, because um, yes. I pointed out that you have to have those in the exact order as you see them. Uh, yes. So, key, string, I'm... list, and integer. Yes, but there, of course, these are different. These, these are different. For dialogue, which is different. Before it was ID and string, I think. I uh, can't remember. I think it was. But same but, principle. Uh, yes. Yeah. The LL dialogue has slightly different ones, of course, because you've got to have the buttons and the channel that you're listening to. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and change these into actual values that we'd want. So for the avatar, I'm just going to go ahead and use the LL detected key function, and this will work because it is in the touch function. So that's going to send the dialogue to the person who clicks it. For the message, that's going to be the part at the top of the dialogue, that text that we saw. So in here, I'm just going to go select an option, colon. And for the buttons, I'm going to make a list. Now, a list is done by two square brackets, and anything inside that, separated by commas, is strings. So for the buttons, so say I only want a button saying here, option one, and then I have another one saying option two. Oops. OK, so there we go. We've got two buttons in this. And then the last one is our channel, and I'm going to do it on channel, I don't know, 100. Now, I haven't set up a listener yet, so if we click any of these options, we won't see anything happen, but let's just see the dialogue in action first. So, that should save, yep. And if I was to click that, there you go. Ah. You get two options. Clicking them does absolutely nothing. Don't click block, because block will shut the box up. You'll never be able to get a a message from this box again, uh, for those who are wondering. Uh, it's like blocking an avatar. Um, so there you go, there's a basic dialogue. That's very simple, isn't it? Just one call to the other dialogue function. Now, to understand how to listen to it, we have to use, uh, in our, if you remember in the last episode, Jack, we were talking about LL uh, listen remove, because yep. I was talking about how memory can, if you have too many of them, we can remove the listeners that way. Well, in, this is one of the many cases of using listens, um, but having to remove the listener once you're done with it. Because, of course, you only want it to happen when you click the box. So what's going to happen is, just before that, I'm going to go ahead and put a, a listen call to channel 100, like so. And I'm going to create my listen event, which is the channel, the name, the ID, and the message. And uh, I'm going to just do that. Okay. We know the channel's 100, so I'm just going to do the statement to just filter out only channel 100 messages. 
messages on channel 100. Um, and uh, the message is actually the option that they chose. So whatever text is in here, that's what message will contain. So if I go if message equals equals option 1, oops, you've got to make sure that's exactly the same, by the way. It is case sensitive. I can go LL say 0, um, you chose the first option on the dialog. And I can copy and paste that with an else if for option two and say you chose the second option for the dialog. And I'm just checking that to make sure it's fine. Right. Now I'm just going to set up the uh, listen remove method. So I'll, I'll call it something nice, uh, I don't know, dialog listener. And copy paste equals that. So remember we're creating the, we're saving the ID of this listen port. Okay. And then down here. Once we've detected it's on channel 100, we know it's from this listener. Um, I'm going to go LL listen remove uh, dialog listener. Okay, so just to quickly run through, when you click the box, it will set up the listener for us. It'll save it in this integer. It will send the dialog. They click an option. As soon as they click an option, this listener event will fire. It will go channel 100. Yes, what options they've chosen? There you go. And do the LL site and then immediately remove the listener. And there we go, done. Now, if they choose ignore, uh, or if they chose an option that didn't exist, all this code will do is it'll fire straight the way through and ignore all these and it'll just go straight to the listener remove. So basically, nothing will happen, which is exactly what you want to do. If you click the ignore button, you want to ignore the dialogue, don't you? Okay. So if we go ahead and say that, now if you choose a check, you should be able to see. Oh, I can't get a message. I'm on unavailable. There we go. Forgot about that. There we go. So there's the message that we, um, we saw. And then you can see it doesn't matter what option you choose, it should always be able to come up with the correct, correct answer. Brilliant. Okay. Now, it's theoretically, simple, isn't it? could you do the same for, like, you know, when we rotate the objects and all that kind of stuff? Yes. So let's say you just choose option yes. one, you rotated it 45 degrees. Um, it's theoretically, right, shall, could shall you we, do that? Yeah, shall we, t shall we tie in some FFOs here and say, uh, okay, yeah. uh, rotate. Now, but now, you have to be careful because these buttons can only have a maximum length. Uh, you can put as what you like there, but they'll be trimmed in the box because those buttons are a fixed size. So we have to put it really short here. So I'll do rotate L for rotate left, and I'll do here rotate R for rotate right. And then I can change these options here, like this, and like this. And what I can do is when I say, when they choose rotate left, we'll make it rotate left 90 degrees. So uh, actually no, let's do 45 degrees, make it more evident. Um, so if we just set up those um, angles, and now rotating left would be minus 90, I think. Um, uh, let's just set up the radians here. This is always a tedious task when it comes to rotations, as you guys know from my previous video. I know that. <laughs> And uh, just, oh, just the rot. I'm just gonna, gonna get confused. Euler to rot, and then finally I'll set to the rot. Brackets Obviously, we've get rot. we've actually covered all this in the previous video, so if you're interested, yes. one out, feel free. Uh, okay. Yes, that's in our moving objects video. And if I go ahead and copy that, paste it in here, and just do instead of minus ninety, ninety. Just check that, seems to be fine, I think. Yep, let's go ahead and try it. So I save that, close. Okay, and now it's saved, we can click, hopefully. Yep, and then when you choose rotate left. Nothing oh. happened. Oh. Huh. Okay, rotate right's oh. working. Oh. And yes, oh. there we go, it's working now. It must have just took a while to kick in. Yeah. There we go. There we go then. Fantastic. So that's the, pretty much. I did. I did say forty-five degrees, didn't I? Well, you get the picture anyway, guys. Um, so literally, you, you could around, you could take that and do anything you want, especially yeah. with the last two that we've covered. Uh, with listening, obviously moving. Um, what was the one we did? We just covered the basic stuff. Obviously, like other ones in the future that we're going to do. Like I don't know. Uh, I mean, um, getting someone's ID, for example. Yes. Like, yes. like you could say, your uh, if you choose op option one, you get shown your ID. If you choose option two, however, you'll get shown the owner's ID. Uh, sorry, I just like to uh, prove that. I do like demonstrating what they look like. 
So your ID, owner ID. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put a space between that because it looks nicer. So your ID would be um, LL instant message ID, comma. <laughs> Funny enough, I can just do that, can't I? And then I just go, your ID is colon plus that. And then for the owner's ID, uh, copy and get that. Uh, instant message ID, your own owner ID is LL get owner. Now, we're having to cast them to strings, remember, because these are key types, so we have to make them turn into strings. And now, Jack, if you touch that, it should. Yep, and then if I choose owner ID. Oh, yes, because it's the same person, but you should have something different for the your ID part. Yep, mine starts with 7851 and mm -hmm. owner ID is yours. Yep, yep. and but there's there one more go. quick thing I want to cover, and that is so. you can have multiple dialogues inside the here. So, oh, for example, once I've, select, once I've selected your ID, you can immediately go. Um, LL listen remove. So I'm just going to basically force it to remove a listener here, so that we can do this. We can go dialog listener equals LL listen. So another listen call. This time on port one hundred and one. So this is a separate listener, Jack and guys. And then we can do a dialog LL dialog here using the ID. Uh, select another option and uh, another option. <laughs> we only have one option for this dialog. Actually, now let's go for three. Even though we actually now, no, that's going to be too much work. Let's just do one. Be easier for us. So there we go. So we've got and another option here. And now what will happen is because um, it's going all the way down here, we've just gone ahead and set up another listener. It's going to call L listen move again, which we don't want to happen because that's going to cause a bug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take to just return there. I'm just going to say forget all the code after it. We want to stop here because we're waiting for a message. Um, do you want to just say what return does? We actually haven't covered that. Uh, Return just returns. Uh, we did it on the function thing, but I, I'll recap it. The return oh. is returning the function or returning the event in this case to uh, to the caller effectively, and the caller in this case because it's an event uh, is from the LSL scripting engine. Um, if it was in a function, of course, return would return to whoever called it. So literally, called. it cycles through the code, and then when it sees return, it just resets and goes back up again and just finishes. Yes, it cuts it on where it started. So it, cu it cuts it off basically. Like putting the plug out of the computer. Ignore, and yeah, you'll ignore all that. That's okay. selected now. That's fine. So uh, that will be now. What we have to do is set up the listener event. So else, if channel equals equals one hundred and one, if the message equals equals another option, L I'll say, hey, you chose. Oops, quotes jump. Hey, you chose another option. And uh, and then of course the almighty LL listen remove, which I'll do down here. So hopefully no errors will occur there. No. So now if you choose the first option, Jack. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. So your ID, and then you get to choose another one. Hopefully, yep. There you go. Right now. I've just saw something uh, funny then. Um, when you were clicking it, I couldn't click this box. We must click it at the same time or something similar. It might be because the script was already working on you. You see. Um, I think that might be the reason of. That might be because of the LL listen remove. I think it was removing it and it wasn't allowing me. You probably, probably was getting confused. But um, there is ways to make it so that multiple people can be using it at the same time. But of course, that's up to the programmer in making sure that the listen events are asynchronous, which is a nice word that you guys could look up. Asynchronous meaning it's all happening separately rather than happening in order, in sequence. But uh, it's a bit more hard work to do that. But you guys get the point. So uh, there you go. One last thing to touch on. Um, basically, you know, because you said that there's only a set maximum amount of buttons you can have on, on the dialogue. Well, when you exceed, does it go to knock another page? No. You have to all do all that yourself. And no, I can't go into that. Why because not? the scripts for it is huge. And I mean, it took me forever to get it to work for our TARDIS notecard system. So basically, to get like another menu to cycle through, 
you have to keep track of all the pages yourself. You have to keep track of the variable to have what page number you're on. You have to keep track of a variable to have what max pages you have. You have to then use a system to be able to sort out which buttons go on which pages. I mean, that's fine. It's, it's, no. it, it is pretty pretty hard. I don't I don't really want to go into it because it will take us quite a long while. Well, that's, that's fine because um, one thing I would I always like about tutorials. Uh, especially the short ones, is that they start somewhere, then the next video you then go in. So probably in the next video it's best that we go through that way. Uh, we'll, we'll see, because it, it, is, it is really hard work. And uh, I probably, myself, I would probably class it as an intermediate to advanced uh, kind of thing, only because it involves a lot of logic thinking, you know, making sure you, you've, you've got to you keep track of the page number you're on, keep track of what maximums you're on, you've got to keep track of what buttons are showing. And when it came to our note card system, I had to keep track of where the note cards are, because the, uh, the system that I was using grabbed all the note card locations in one whole list, and I had to filter it out manually uh, where um, which buttons would show which lists right. and when you click the next button it's going to generate a brand new list from using the new buttons oh my god it was a lot of work <laughs> well, so, we'll see if we'll we cover that in the future um, yeah. but other than that um, that's pretty much all we got for today folks until next time folks do take care, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and of course uh, see you soon bye yeah. bye, bye, -bye that is all we have for today, folks. Join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and comment on the video below. Remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, and remember, let, let your, your geeks, geeks slide out. out. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.